Everyone on this planet is in a battle. You are in a battle, whether you realize it or not. This world is not a playground. It's a spiritual battleground. There are forces of good and evil fighting over your soul and the impact you will have in the lives of others. This week, we're going to talk about how to overcome spiritual attacks. We're going to talk about spiritual warfare. And today, we want to give you an overview from Ephesians chapter 6, as the Apostle Paul teaches the people of Ephesus how to do spiritual warfare. It's interesting. Scholars tell us that Ephesus, of all the cities in the world in the first century, it was possibly the darkest, most evil spirit-filled city on the planet. And yet Paul went there and successfully started a church, and in chapter 6 of this letter, he teaches them about spiritual warfare. So, I'm going to give you several principles of spiritual warfare from Ephesians 6. Number one, spiritual warfare is personal and it's present. He says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Take up the whole armor of God. You take up the whole armor of God. This is personal. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This is a us. We are in this battle. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to be a part of it or not, we are in it. It's not something from the past. It's not something from the future. We are in it right now. Second, spiritual warfare is an intense life and death battle. The word wrestle we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That word means hand-to-hand combat to the death. This is fighting to the death. This isn't child's play. This isn't, isn't just uh, fancy stuff. This is serious stuff because people's eternal destiny hangs in the balance. It's very intense. Think about this. Paul wrote this letter from a prison. He was in prison because of spiritual warfare. Not long after this, he was executed. This is serious stuff. Life and death, heaven and hell, depend on spiritual warfare. The third thing I want you to see is that spiritual warfare is spiritual. He says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. He says we're not wrestling. It's not about physical. It's not financial. It's not political. It's not legal. That could be part of it, but at the root of it, it's spiritual. The enemy, and he lists these different ranks, these different strata of demons, uh, principalities, powers. He says that's who the war is ultimately coming from. So, it's a spiritual battle we are in. Number four, you got to understand, we are the battleground. We are the battleground. From the moment a person is born on this planet, the enemy fights to keep that person away from God. From the moment a person is born again on this planet, the enemy fights to keep that person from being used by God to lead other people to God. So it's very, very personal. We are the battle. We are the battleground. It's not happening in another country. It's not happening out there. It's not happening uh, next. It, it's happening here. We, in our homes, in our heads, we are where the battle is happening. The fifth thing about it is it's all about evangelism. Paul says, I want you to pray that I'll make known the mystery of the gospel. The thing Satan's going to fight the most is when we tell other people the good news of Jesus, because that is what liberates the captives that he has. That's what breaks the snares and the chains that he's holding people in. That's what advances God's kingdom against the kingdom of darkness. That's what rescues captives out of hell, out of darkness. So you've got to understand, it's all about evangelism. And the more evangelistic you become, the more you need to understand spiritual warfare. Number six... We're the one, we make a difference. Now, God could easily defeat Satan, but he's chosen to allow Satan to do what he does, and he wants to use us as doing our part. We are the body of Christ here on earth. We are the body. We're the ones that, that actually carry out the warfare. 
It's up to us. In this section, Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, there are 16 commands. He says, be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Wrestle against principalities and powers. Take up the whole armor of God. Withstand in the evil day. Stand, having therefore, stand. Gird your waist with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the sandals of the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith. Take up the helmet of salvation. Take up the sword of the Spirit. Pray. Pray uh, being alert. Pray being watchful. Pray in perseverance. Pray for me that I can speak forth the word. I can make it plain. I have to speak as I ought to speak. These are all actions. This is how we advance the kingdom. This is how we fight this battle. This is how we stay protected. We got to do our part. God will do his part, but we've got to do our part. Stay tuned the rest of this week as we talk about how we can do our part in the battle. But let me close with this. We read in Romans chapter 8, we are victorious. In Christ, we are victorious. Paul wrote in 837, we are more than victorious, more than conquerors through him who who loves us. We are overcomers through him, Christ Jesus, who loves us. You can win, and you can win starting today as you find your strength in Jesus Christ. If you like this video, you want to hear more of this, listen every day. Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube channel or like this page and follow us every day.